Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Schuster, and I am here today with Edie San Giorgio, and I am so excited to have her on. What an amazing life and journey she's been on. She needs to share this with all the viewers about her. It's called the Katie's Corner Cartoon, and I've seen some of the work, but the journey that she's gone on to get this far just is amazing, and I want her to share this with other people so that they can see entrepreneurship isn't an easy road. A lot of hard knocks there and a lot of steps have to go through that you have to go through in order to get to the point that you are. So welcome, Edie. Great to have you here. Thank you, Thank you Jenny, for inviting me. That This is going to be fun. So. I love it. Well, tell us some of your journey. Let's get started so that people get to know you. Um, I would have to say that it starts out with my family. Um, my dad was a doctor. My, my uncle was a doctor. My sister's a nurse. Everybody's in this medical you know, field. And so I kind of come from a, uh, a desire to help people feel better, heal them. I can't do blood though. In fact, I can't do needles, but I can do tears. So I've always been interested in um, emotional and, and, and mental health kind of issues. Um, so that's kind of one aspect of who I am. The other thing is I'm a writer. Um, I've been writing since I was 14 years old. I just kind of had this passion to just create. My husband says I'm always the happiest when I write. So that's kind of this other aspect of me. Um, but I'm also just a uh, kind of an, have an entrepreneurial spirit to me. Um, I, I don't really like working for other people. I, I, I'll do that sometimes, but I'm too, too independent. And so you kind of like blend all that stuff together and you end up with somebody that wants to write about things and address issues and topics that have to do with people's emotional state, the personal growth stuff. Uh, I think in my intro, I, I, I said that I, um, the bio that I had given you, that the first book I read that was personal growth was um, The Sky's the Limit by Wayne uh, Dyer back in 1982. And I've just been sort of a, an avid personal growth you know, reader and, and student for all those years. So um, I ended up, you know, married, and then I end up with several kids through fertility. And so when you have kids in fertility, um, you end up, you know, not wanting to put them off onto somebody else. And so I was the stay at home mom, but I had all this creative energy in me. And I, and so I ended up writing a book um, about relationships. It was called Divorce Vows. Uh, it's still on Amazon. Uh, but that journey to, to write that book was long and arduous um, as I fumbled through the process of writing and editing and, and formatting and, and all that stuff. Um, and then I also got very interested in um, emotional work. And my, I met a, a chiropractor who introduced me to the emotion code and tapping. And so I've, I'm a practitioner for the emotion code and certified in, as a practitioner for tapping. And for those that don't know what tapping is, it's called emotional freedom technique. And it's a way to kind of move emotional energy out of your bodies and, and that kind of help reprogram you, uh, which, is, which is that part of me that wants to help people heal. You know, So I kind of have that aspect of me. And, and one of the book ideas that I have is a book called Tapping on the Toilet, How to Get the Crap Out in More Ways Than One. <laughs> Again, it's that way of blending my, my, my writer, my creative sense with you know somebody that that wants to share with the world tapping yeah. um so that is of, creative i want you to know edie i know You're i know well, and the thing is it gets everybody to laugh and laughter is a big part of i think healing you know they always say laughter is the yeah. best medicine. you know reader's digest had a whole segment on that for decades um so then a, uh, it's been about two and a half years ago i had this idea about getting a um a cartoon character is like, like, like my little alter ego. Um, I'm an introvert. Don't like to put myself out there. Um, don't like to draw attention to myself, but I could draw attention to a character that would be different. And so I'm I, behind the character, I, right? It's almost like a ventriloquist. Yeah. You know, it can oh, say yeah. all kinds of things, you know, and but it, that didn't come from eating. No, no. It came from the dummy, you know, came right. From, right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I went on Fiverr and I connected with this guy named Claudio DeMarco. 
He's down in Brazil. He doesn't speak English, but he writes English very well. So we communicate. And so I told him I wanted this um, uh, character of a work, work at home mom and, and behind her desk. And so he, um, I guess he looked at my picture. So she kind of looks just a little bit like me. She could kind of be like, maybe she could be my daughter, maybe, or my sister. So it's not exactly like me, but she's got blonde hair and she'll put glasses on top of her head and that kind of thing. Um, and so she's sitting behind her desk, the first one, and she's got pink slippers on and she's dressed okay from the, you know, up her um, waist up. And the caption was, um, I just love working from home. It's cut my commute from um, miles to steps, just 9,950 steps to go. <laughs> you know? So it's that idea that it's great to be able to work from home, but there's a sacrifice in that you don't really go very far. You know, yeah. you, know, you, know you got 50 steps to your office, you know. And, uh, um, and so I, I liked it so well. And then, and then I don't, I don't even know if I had the name Katie yet, but in his picture, he had this pink kind of um, angle of the shadowing that was uh, like the corner was colored, a uh, different color that kind of shadowed it. And so I thought corner, I thought it's like Katie's corner. That's how I came up with the name. Wow. He had this corner that, that just had this place that you could just put a name. And this is like Katie's little life, her little corner for the world, you know, and so that's where the name came up, came from was, was Katie. And, and I, I liked it so much. I, I gave him another idea. And so I could just kept sending him um, uh, captions and he was doing all these um, cartoons. And we started out with perfectionism and procrastination and uh, going to networking meetings and having the fear of getting up and, and doing your, your elevator pitch and um, you know, just all the typical, you know, entrepreneurial topics entrepreneurial and, fears and fears right, right yeah and 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 issues you know like like mm-hmm. being a perfectionist or procrastinating yeah and uh and this was we we started in in the the winter of 2019 and so it took a few months to kind of get a bunch of them you know ready to kind of launch and get my website you know set up and and he did the banner you know her picture on the banner I'll, I'll show it to you and uh COVID hit oh right and I went Oh no. I said, we cannot be putting out cartoons on perfectionism and procrastination when everybody's locked down with their kids and they're fearful of this little virus that they're pushing out there and scaring everybody. And um, so I had to completely revamp. And so then we started doing COVID topics and what it was like to be a stay, work at home mom and have your kids at the same kitchen table doing their homework as you're trying to do your work and, and deal with social, um, the, the social distancing and the masks and the toilet paper and, you know, the hoarding and, you know, just a bunch of, of COVID topics. So we launched with that. And then Claudio said, you know, the moms down in Brazil are going through the exact same things that you all are going through. I'd like to see them done in, in Portuguese and Spanish. Oh. So I, there was a dot sister, um, a polka dot gal for, up in Massachusetts that could speak Portuguese. And she was a translator, actually. Oh, so terrific. For, um, uh, for no cost, just as, as a gratuitous firm for me, she translated a, a bunch of the cartoons for, uh, that were the COVID cartoons in Portuguese and Spanish. So on the website, I've got Katie in multilingual. And at some point, I'd like to do all of them in multilingual because they're kind of universal topics. Um, so that was like the first six months or so. And then I got off on to doing the regular cartoons of, of different topics. Um, but COVID sort of, you know, kept us, you know, bunkered down in our homes and we couldn't go out and network. Oh, and yeah. I was, people would ask me, what are you going to do with Katie? I go, I don't know yet. I'm, I'll have to wait and see where she, where she goes. You know, I didn't really have a, particular in game with Katie. It was just more of my creative self just kept coming up with these captions. They would pop into my head. I go, Oh, that one's funny, you know? And, and so I'd send it to Claudio and he's just terrific. His, his artwork is so detailed and, and, and just fun. And we'll so show I, the viewers here I in will. a couple minutes. What it yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. Yeah. And uh, 
So I've just been working on Katie doing these cartoons and trying to figure out, well, now how am I going to get Katie, you know, and I was thinking about maybe putting Katie on the cover of the tapping on the toilet book, you know, and having Katie discover tapping, you know, um, and I'm still not sure that might happen, but it's, it's, I'm trying to figure out, this is okay, God, you keep giving me all these little pieces of the puzzle, but you're not giving me that, that center piece that's, that's show me how to connect them together. Yeah. And so I'm still a work in progress. Wow. Um, you know, we're. And we're how doing. long have you been doing this? Um, well, we started originally in 2019 when I met Claudio. I okay. launched in, in April of 2020. So it's been two years now. Okay. And we've yeah. got probably, I don't know, between 80 and 90 cartoons. Some of them I repurpose because they're pretty generic and, you know, like she's sitting behind her desk or something. So I come up with a new caption and I can, I put a new caption on an, an older um, cartoon, but probably original cartoons, I'd say 80 original cartoons. And then- wow. Uh, a, a whole lot more that I've, I've repurposed them. And now I'm working on a book um, that's going to come from Katie. Katie's writing the book um, and it's on self-care. And, um, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to include tapping into it. I'll, that'll be one of the activities because it's the working title is um, if I can think of this. Okay. It's like Katie's um uh, post COVID ple- a complete guide to survival and thrival for the average working mom. Ooh, 50, wow. self- 50 self-care activities to help you look, feel, and be your best. Oh, wow. That's terrific. You know? And I, and I started coming up with all these, to, and it's amazing. I could come up with even 50 plus activities. I didn't think I'd come with, with that many. And some of them are very simple. You know, some of them are, you know, watch it, watch an inspirational video. Okay. You know, or, or, or read, you know, read, you know, uh, self, self growth, you know, books or, or inspirational books. And then some of them are the typical, um, you know, uh, taking care of your body, doing, doing Epsom salt baths, drinking water. Uh, and then what's so funny is I'm, as I'm researching the book, I go, okay, I put in there like drink and drink tea. Cause I've got a picture. Uh, Katie's already has a bunch of cartoons with these topics in them. And so I put in benefits of drinking green tea. Well, who knew there was this many? It's like, I didn't know green really? tea. Really? Yeah. For you. And every time I work on one of these activities, I go, oh, I should be doing that. So I go my, make myself a cup of green <laughs> yeah. tea. So you're um, drinking tea. <laughs> you know, and then I did, you know, uh, core exercises. One of the, ex- ex- the activities is doing your core exercises. And before I know it, I'm on the floor doing my, you know, practicing my core exercise. But gosh, <laughs> I need to do these more often, you know. And so I, it's inspiring me to take care of myself in little ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm hoping that that's what the book does is it, is it gives you the idea Oh, this isn't that hard. And, and this is, I'll give you the one that's the really the funny one that kind of launched it is I had a, uh, I had Claudia do a cartoon of Katie and she's in her robe, I think, and her hair is on top of her head in a towel and she's brushing her teeth and she's doing her a squat. She looks at the audience and she says, what, you never seen somebody do squats while brushing their teeth? I call them squat brushes. <laughs> and so it's the idea that, you know what? while you're brushing your teeth, you could be doing your squats, couldn't you, you know? And so when I did, I, I wrote the, the chapter on squats just yesterday and I went, the benefits of doing squats. Well, who knew? I yeah. mean, the big muscle groups and it helps your posture, it helps your digestion. It, um, it, it gives you flexibility. It strengthens your, your, uh, your, uh, your muscles, which helps your bone density. Uh, I mean, it's like this nice long list of things for squats. Yeah. But it's, well, it's, you know, women are known for multitasking. Oh, I know. I know. And in the book, I says, well, this is a unique way to multitask. Yeah. yeah. But it, the, the whole book is a kind of, now there's some that take time, you know, meditation takes quiet time, Yeah. you know, in journaling and, and some of those things, but there's a bunch of them that you can do just, you know, your Kegel exercises. You and I could be doing our Kegel exercises right well, now. How do you know I'm not? I know, I know. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, is that we forget. And that's the other card. I told you yeah. this one, but I'll, I'll say it again. Is the, the cartoon of Katie and she's petting her cat. And she says, 
maybe if I named my cat Kegel, I'd remember to do the blooming exercises. <laughs> I love it. I need a I cat. I better I know, I know, I know. its new name. <laughs> and, and the whole thing is that as women, we forget to take care of ourselves. Yep. And as oh, moms, you're so right, Edie. Especially as yeah. mom. We are so busy taking care of everybody else that we fail to do the little things. It's the little things. And I was calculating that if you did, if you did brush your teeth for two minutes in the morning and two minutes at night, I can do 25 squats in a minute, which makes 50 squats every time I brush my teeth, which is a hundred, hundred squats a day. That's 700 squats a week, 20, you know, 2,800 squats a month. And then I have to multiply that times 12, but that's a lot of squats after a year. Oh my goodness, that is. If you you don't have to go to the gym. Exactly. And it didn't take one extra moment out of your day. Wow. People don't no. think of that. I mean, I never thought of that. And I think of myself as a multitasker, but right. yeah. Right. Well, so, I love that idea. Do you have the book there? Can you show us some viewing of what? I, Katie- I, don't, I don't have the book, but I can show you uh, Katie's, um, um, her website. Okay, let's do that so, so that that's... people know what it looks like. Right. There she is. There's Katie. Oh, she looks like you. She does kind of look like me, but she's not with the same, definitely not the same mouth and the shape of the eyes. But I told you she, he made her blonde. So she kind of looks like a relative of mine. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. And then there's her family. And so she's got the 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 10 year old that's the, the the pre-tween that's kind of got the attitude, the little, you know, um <laughs> little three-year-old Brady and he's uh precocious and then she's got the baby oh yeah and, and then Kyle is her husband and then I've been some of my writing I would thought I should like let people know more about Katie so I would write down Katie's thoughts and so I've got a section called Katie's thoughts and then I'll take some of my um uh social media posts and put those you know in here and then I just added the self-care tip section right there. And one of the, oh, one of the, uh, the um, uh, that I worked on yesterday, self-care activities is mirror, mirror work. Oh, Where you okay. talk to yourself in the mirror. So that was um, the oh. tip for right there. So this is on your website. This is on the website, katiescorner.net, right? Okay. And, and so like this one over here, about, you know, it's about perfectionism. And I actually stole that idea from someplace else where they, they left out all the ease or the, um, um, yeah, they, Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. See, and it doesn't matter. So it really brings home the point that we don't have to be perfect in order to get our message across or to be who, who to, or to, to make a difference in the world. Or, I mean, perfectionism is not what it's cracked up to be. Oh, you it's know. really hard on you. Very stressful. Oh, very stressful. And yet I think a, an awful lot of women go through that mentality and it takes them a while to gain confidence and everyone does it in a different way. Right. Right. But Katie, her, her, when she always has on her, her little uh, pink slippers Oh, I and see. Yeah. That's, that's good know, and, then, and then she's got her, she's got a dog and a cat. So we'll have to bring in pet care or pets, you know, at some point I do actually have a couple of, uh, um, of ones that have the pets in them that are part of the, the cartoon. And then I just throw in some little lines and see, this is from me. I read to my kids every night, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't go and, and pursue uh, work to the point where it took time away from my kids. Yeah. I think that reading is very important to the kids. Right. So <laughs> anyways, that's kind of it. And then um, like, here's Katie multilingual. Oh, okay. Look at that. Oh, how fun. Miss Global. Yeah. Yeah. And for those people who don't know, Polka Dot Sisters is a global organization of women who get together any place in the country. And what's fun about it is once you're a member of Polka Dots, 
when you go on a trip, you can connect with different polka dots and they'll give you information on where you can eat, the best places to go visit, that sort of stuff. Well, and even I'm, just, just having just coffee with a, um, um, a fellow polka dot, you know, while you're on your trip. So like yeah. here's Katie with the entrepreneurship. Now, see, this is a funny one. This is this is the first one right here, right? Here, this on the right. Oh, that was okay. Close. You can see how it kind of just had this spot for Katie's corner right there. Yeah. And uh, and then my my friend Chris, who is the computer guy, this is he he was telling me that I should come up with a passphrase for um um for a password. Oh, so this, okay. So this is Katie. You know, this is her password. <laughs> I love it. How creative, Edie. I know. And then this brings in about the personal growth. You know, when you're the five people that you spend the most time around, you know, and she says, don't you dare tell a mother that we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. Because that we mothers would end up being coming narcissistic, snot nosed crybabies. <laughs> oh, what's funny is. This is so much like entrepreneurship when you're trying to get in, just decide what business you're going to get into. You encapsulated all of this stuff for people. There's so much personal growth that goes on. And oh, yeah. Well, and then like the Zoom, you know, everybody's been on Zoom. Yeah. And so it's Katie's like, oh, God, you know. <laughs> and then. Uh, and then this one right here about perfectionists and procrastination. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I figured out to how to perfect the art of procrastination. Right. Now, at some point, this is going to be another book, but you've already had experience in writing a book. So I'm sure this one will be a whole lot easier for you. Um, well, this one's going to be an ebook, and I'm still not quite sure um, how I can do it. What I um, the, the main thing is, is one is to spread the message, you know, of self-care mm -hmm. and, and right. make it fun, you know, and one of my lines was, was going to be something like, uh, you know, self-care is no laughing, laughing matter, but then maybe it should be, you know, I mean, why don't we make it a little bit more lighthearted, you know, because um, you're right, because people get stressed about, taking care of themselves, especially moms, where they think that it's their job to give, be the caregiver right. all the time. Right. Yeah. I like that idea. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then like, see this one, this one, uh, when she, and she says, my business coach keeps encouraging me to come up with my big why. So all day long, I go around saying, why, why, why? And then I realize, <laughs> oh my God, I'm starting to sound like my three-year-old. <laughs> Oh my goodness, does that touch home? Ooh. I know, but to see, and that combines that motherhood with the entrepreneur and the struggle and that conflict that that working moms oh, have, because you know, on one part of your brain and in, in your heart, in your to do list is all about your kids, and then this other side of you is completely, and when it crosses over, it it comes out kind of funny, you know, yeah, because we're, we get irritated at our, our three-year-old for going why all the time. And yet our business coach, that's what they're asking us. It is. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, much to think about here. Right. Right. Um, oh, and then, then like, uh, oh, this is uh, the 30, this is the elevator fit pitch. I've got a 30 second elevator pitch and I'll walk you to your car and, and tell you more pitch. And it'll let me pour my heart out of her drinks and tell you who I really am. Pitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh what points you make oh this is hurtful <laughs> <laughs> and then then in this political climate because i like to think i'm politically correct in my business well as long as politically incorrect thoughts don't count yeah. <laughs> oh edie you you make you definitely know how to get people to laugh these are right. terrific well Anyway, so so this is this is you can go on for those of you watching, you can go on Katie's corner and yeah, and just laugh along with her and and yeah. um, if you got some ideas or, or 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 I'm also letting people be in 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 cartoons. So um, 
let me see if I can find a couple of people that are. Uh, now, I also saw that people can go on and subscribe to you. I don't think that I right. subscribed yet. So I'll right. make sure that I do that because I absolutely love these. Right. And now this is this is uh, my Chris Smith. He's my friend who has the, the business CompuStar. And so he does all my take care, care takes care of my computers. Oh, OK. Um, so I put him in in one of the cartoons and he says, Katie, I can clean up your computer viruses, but you're going to have to start practicing some social media distancing. The viruses you're picking up there are infecting your attitude. <laughs> um, anyway, and I think I, I've got other ones. Maybe 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 they're they're listed someplace else, but I've got some other people okay. uh, that are it's kind of fun to see my you know uh so that's the personal growth channel yeah um uh, i like this one i'd like to think that that calm feeling i have in my gut is my intuition speaking to me but then maybe it's just the alka seltzer kicking in <laughs> do they even make alka seltzer anymore i don't know yeah i've got an old one i should have thrown yeah. out oh oh let me see this they Right now, this is me with uh, getting acupuncture. This is my acupuncturist, Jennifer. Yeah. And, and I have this phobia for needles. <laughs> so she says, Katie, relax. I know you have a phobia of needles, but I promise you, you won't faint. You're already <laughs> lying down. <laughs> so these really are experiences you've gone through that you're oh, yeah. expressing in a humorous way. So yeah. now we just have to figure out, okay, God, what do you want me to do with her? How do you want me to, to, to make her have an impact in the world in a funny, positive way, but at the yeah. same time, make a difference, Yeah, you know, and, and get messages out there that. Um, and are, I think that's the big role of most entrepreneurs is they want to figure out a way that they can give back to society of positivity and how they can help people. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Make those lives better, whatever, whatever yeah. the problem is, they want to want to offer the solution. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is a great way, as opposed to some of the businesses where they keep saying, don't throw up on the people and tell them everything about you. You know, maybe you could do a humorous one on that where someone's trying to drill in. This is what I do at the network. Right. Meetings. Right. right. Yeah. And it's just, uh, you just have to find creative ways to, uh, um, you know, market yourself and let people know who you are. And yeah, should I tell them about, about what Chris shared with me about the little cards? Yeah, let's uh, talk about that. That would be a great tip for people. I saw one on the internet and I'm, I'm going to kind of like steal or paraphrase because it didn't have a, a person's a quote, you know, or a, a, who it was by. But basically the gist is, it says, embrace your uniqueness. Remember that the sperm that made you beat out millions of others. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, I love it. It's like, it, it's one of those things that, that I love it when it, when you laugh and you, it gets you to think, and it's a serious, it's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so true. And it gets you to kind of go, I, I can't embrace my uniqueness. And then there's a, there's a scientific reason for it, you know? Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, that's, that's the creation. That is the beginning of, of our creativity was that sperm said, I'm the one I'm going to make this, I'm going to do it, you know, uh -huh. and, and yeah. that, that started your whole life. Right. Well, and then also I wrote my book, Divorce Vows. Oh, wow. That was one of my learning experiences that I took a second mortgage out of my house. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we already had the second mortgage. I just took money out of that, you know, account, yeah. you know, yeah. so spent a lot of money. It was a very expensive learning experience and I'm still, and it's still there. I could still go back and market it. I mean, it's kind of divorce is timeless. You know, it's, it's always ongoing. Yeah. And, um, it was a spiritual book on relationships. Oh my goodness. The premise was if you can't have a successful marriage, then have a successful divorce. Mm. And here's a roadmap because that's, that's the writer in me. My yep. husband always says, Edie, you're the happiest when you write. 
Yeah. So I just have to write. I, and it's like, I don't know what's going to come out of me any, any particular day or, or period of my life. I, I never thought I would create a Katie's Corner, but I connected with Claudio, which was a divine connection. He was about to get off Fiverr when I showed up. And now he's, we've done, I don't know, I don't know, pushing a hundred cartoons, 90 something cartoons, maybe. Wow. You know, and he's going to, and he's doing the book the my, my, the book I'm working on, he's, he's doing all the illustrations for that. <laughs> Divine so, intervention. Yeah. Well, and on he, both he, parts, well, and we got to be open to it. And then, and then you just have to kind of run with it. And, and one of the, the other quote that I'm going to put on one of my cards is, Sometimes the only available next step is a leap of faith. Wow. You know, wow. Isn't that true? you know, you, you don't know what your next step is going to be. And you just have to just to leap out there in faith and just run with it and just go, I don't know why I'm going down this road. It's like, why are you climbing this mountain? I don't know. I'll tell you when I get to the top. <laughs> that you is know? so true, Edie. I, mean, I cannot believe that. I, yeah. I mean, and I kind of feel like that's been my whole career. I keep meandering from one passion. I thought that this was going to be it. You know, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm dating businesses or I'm dating ideas. Yeah. You know? And until I, <laughs> like, I you know, run out of their fizzle or something, or I, go, I don't like you anymore, <laughs> but I've been married 35 years so I could stick with something. So it's not like I don't have that capacity in me. But I've just never found that one thing. And I'm hoping that Katie is is it. I hope that Katie's the, is the one thing that I go. Okay, I'm going to run with this and then turn this into a, a major brand. That's that's kind of what what my goal is. Yeah, it's like where did Maxine come from? You know, but all this is valuable information. I was going to do a course, by the way. I hired Karen Fournier to come over and I spent money two hours to help me set up. And then I get to thinking, and I just never really, I, I got the whole curriculum all written out and everything, but I couldn't seem to pull the trigger. And then all of a sudden I had this idea for this book and the writer in me goes, yes, let's do that. You know, instead. Yeah. Um, and so Follow that path, well, and it's, and it's, it's also, it was a way to connect Katie because the course has nothing to do with Katie. Exactly. Oh. You know, whereas the book is going to be coming from Katie. This is Katie's book. Katie's writing this book from her perspective. You know, as, as a, 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 you know, working mom that's like frazzled and trying to balance everything and, you know, and facing. I'm, I'm, I came up with another cartoon idea and I, I don't know whether I'm going to have Claudia do it soon because he's working on the book um, stuff, but it's going to be Katie sitting in a, in a, in a group setting with a bunch of women around, you know, in a circle and on this wall behind her, it's going to have welcome to AA. And then she's going to say, hi, my name is Katie and I'm addicted to adrenaline. <laughs> you know, so, it's like a, 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 the adrenaline junkies, you know, you yeah. gotta go, 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 go all the time. And it's that, and, it, and I, I was going to have a, addicted to anxiety or addict because, you know, she's anxious or it's like addicted to drama, you know, or and, you could leave it open so that people can fill in the blank. Well, I think and I'm going to leave it the adrenaline because I think that's, that that's a softer approach. It's not anxiety because that's kind of a heavy topic. Exactly. But adrenaline, and people have heard the type term adrenaline junkies. Yeah. You know, and the, and the self-care book is about how to got calm everything down, take a little bit of a breather space, you know, yeah. and do some self-care of, of getting your, your brain waves a little bit calmer or, um, doing Kegel exercises. That's the cartoon I did with her when she has her cat and she's petting the cat, you know, maybe if I named the cat Kegel, I'd remember to do the bloom and exercise. <laughs> You know, and because they're just so busy when moms are so freaking busy. Yeah. And, and that's your adrenaline. It's not that, that she's, she doesn't want to be addicted to adrenaline, but that she can't seem to figure out how to counter counterbalance that and yeah. stop doing it because moms have this feeling like if I'm not 
there doing it for my children are always there doing whatever that they what they expect of me oh i can relate so well to that you know and i was talking to sarah morris she's a she's the owner of the we spot which is a a a blog site for for women and i'm one of the writers uh, for this year and um she said i i I used to think that I had to, you know, before I left the house, I'd have to do the crock pot, you know, to make sure when there was dinner every night, you know. I did the same oh, I thing. I know, you know, and so, and so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, the adrenaline of feeling like you've got to always be on high alert to make sure everything's getting done. Yeah. And, and, um, and so I think Katie's going to also be a lot about, um, organization. I think she's going to bring in organizational tools. Uh, like Katie could have a calendar, for instance, you know, uh-huh. or um, a, Katie could have a cookbook of, of easy recipes, you know, things that you can throw in, you know, at the last minute, or even your 10 year old can put together for you, you know, or something. I don't know, but it's, it's, I'm still trying to figure out my target audience. I, well, I think know. you have it named, don't you? These Busy moms who are trying to, they're super moms, super women. Right. And I'm also going to, going to try to appeal to the, the creative moms out there. The ones that are, that are just like me, that, that had children and feel compelled to make sure that, that they're taken care of, but there's this creative sense in them that they want to go out and do something in the world. They want to make their mark. They, they, they can't just be at home. They have to be doing something. That's when I wrote my book. That's what saved me from, from just being a stay-at-home mom is that's when I wrote my book. Um, Cause I had to, you know, the, I'd take the kids to school and I'd come back to my computer and I'd get creative, you know, but I didn't want to be um, obligated to anybody else, um, you know, and responsibility and, and make it all about the money and, and, and put that kind of pressure on me. I, I wanted to be able to just to be creative when it was going to work with my schedule. You know, so that's why I think I, I wrote the book. It's kind of selfish in that way. No, yeah. that's not. No, in, was that's self care. I was it was protective because I didn't. We didn't need the money at the time, and and plus my kids were fertility kids, so I wasn't going to go and go here. I'm going to have a bunch of kids. Not oh, kids, you can just raise yourself. I'm going to go off and, and fill do this job to fulfill me. You know, so I had to find ways to get fulfillment outside of, of motherhood. Right. You know? And my yeah. creativity just kept coming up, you know, and, and so I wrote this book and I thought the book was going to be the thing. Oh, I don't know whether I told you this, but when my kids were about two, um, I was trying to go to sleep one night and I was in that la la state and I, I, you know, not asleep and not, it was in that, you know, beginning stage and all of a sudden sparklers went off in my eyelids and my brain woke up and I, I was alert. And I literally heard a voice say, you have more work to do before you write. Ooh, wow. Shot up in bed and went, holy crap, I heard that. Okay, what's the work? <laughs> you know, and for a year, I still don't know what that meant. I, you know, I kept thinking, you know, motherhood or just life was my work. And then, and then when I had the book idea, I go, oh, that's what I was supposed to write, you know, and maybe it's, I, maybe it's, it's, maybe it's Katie now, you know, I don't, cause the book one didn't go anywhere. I didn't, I didn't know how to market it. That's, the, that's usually the issue that people yes. have. They don't okay. know exactly how to, to market it, but right. with Katie's corner, you're getting out there a lot more. Plus you're done pretty much with motherhood. So therefore you have the time. If you're working on Katie's corner, people are going to want to know what else you've done. So that's where here, oh, here you go. Here's another book that I've written. And you know, there are a lot of people who find interest in that subject. Right. Well, and the thing about, at least with the book, it was, it was that, that, that sense of, I can take an idea, a complex idea and work on it for a number, because it took me a number of years to write the book. Um, and then, then put my money behind, behind my work and see it all the way through to completion to I actually have a book in hand. It's not like I've got a book idea. I want to write one day. People have those all the time. I actually did it and I can go, I did it. 
I, I, I wrote a book and I brought it all the way to market, you know, now I didn't take it all the way to, you know, to sales, but at least I, I produced it. You know, I didn't just say that's very, very admirable and not an easy task. No, it's not. And, and it, like I said, we spent a lot of money on it. And partly is because I, I had all these editors. I had seven editors. Wow. And, and, um, what and do you mean the, you gave that, each that, that one picture, a copy? Right. That picture back there. Yeah. Me with the cake. That's yeah. the cover of the book. Oh. And so what it was is one of, one of Rich's co- ex coworkers, he's air traffic control guy. Um, I was, was somehow, I don't forgot how I ended up connecting back with him, but he was, had retired for medical reasons. And he always thought of himself as a wordsmith. And, and so, and he was going through a divorce or he had maybe recently gone through a divorce. And he said, um, I could edit the book for you. So I, you know, I go, good, good. I gave it to him. Well, months went by. And before he even read the book, he, 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 um, painted that picture for me. And it's a picture of, you can see maybe, can you see it? It's a, a, a groom on the top of a wedding cake. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. the bride, and there's yep. a rope hanging down. And the bride is kind of looking down, not looking up at him, she's looking away. And, uh, and so what's interesting is that in the book, I actually talk about how when you get married, it's like you get a climbing partner. Oh, and he, he did that. Be, and he was a climber. He was a rock climber. And he did that actually before he read the book. And I went, that's my cover. Oh, wow. That's the cover. And, uh, and so he was my first editor. Then I ended up going through a bunch of other ones. But the problem was, is that each one of them, except for one had been divorced. Wow. And, and so they would tell me, oh, you know, everything I wanted to hear about being an editor and, you know, you're speaking to the crowd choir and I know this subject or I, I, you know, what I, I forgot what they, cause it's many, many years ago, what they told me, but I go, oh, good. I gave them the manuscript. And, um, and then when they would give it back to me, they would kind of like go, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> like, it's like, oh. I had one of them and I'm on the beach in New York. We went to go back to visit my mother-in-law in in Long Island. And I'm sitting there first day on the beach and she's screaming at me that my book made her sick. She was up all night, you know, or whatever. I forgot exactly. But basically she was berating me because of how the book got to, I I guess it was difficult for her to, to edit or something. But again, all of my editors have been divorced. So I think what happened is that they had to process their own crap in their own, what they did in their divorce as they're going through the book. Wow. I guess. I, 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 again, it was just speculation because yeah. it, is, it is a book that, that really calls you out on getting out of your ego and getting away from the typical way of, of approaching divorce. And um, um, Anyway, so that was a learning experience, expensive learning experience, but. In more ways than one. Yeah. yeah. Probably. We're each here for a reason. And the, the, um, the purpose, I guess, is to figure out why, yep. you know, mm-hmm. why did God make me exactly the way that I am? And why did I run into the people that I've run into? And why did I have the ideas that I have? And why do certain things happen for a reason? And I think it's just a, it's part of the mystery of life is to put it all together and to try to have fun while you're doing it, you know, and to take things a little bit lighter. And that's why I think Katie has been kind of dear to my heart because she's helping me talk about serious topics, you know, from a more humorous, you know, perspective. And, um, and so if you can bring some lightheartedness to any business that you're doing. I think it's a, it's a great way to connect with people. I love it. That's so, so true, Edie. Thank you so much for that input. Welcome. Will you say that one again, one last time? It says, embrace your, your uniqueness. Remember that the sperm that made you beat out millions of others. It's again, it's just to, to let you know that 
you know, and if anybody's visualized, remember back in science, you know, cl biology class, you see the little egg and the, the video of the sperms attacking, yeah. you know, there's all these sperms attacking the egg and none of them get in. And finally, one of them just squirms its way in and just digs, you know, it's like, <laughs> why that one? Yeah, yeah exactly. There's a reason. I don't know why, but there's a reason for that. Yeah. So, uh, but people can go to katiescorner.net. You can subscribe. There's a little yellow button up in the, in the top. Um, and people can email me at ed.sangiorgio um, at gmail. And the last name, it's a little hard to spell. Um, it's S-A-N-G-I-O-R-G-I-O. -O. And it's um, St. George in Italian. I love it. Italian. So, and she loves Italian food. I can. Oh, she likes that. food. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> she yeah. likes food. Well, thank you so much, Edie, okay. for sharing so much great information. This was so fun going yes, and thank seeing you. Katie's Corner. Thanks for the opportunity, Jenny. This was fun for me as well. You know, I again, anybody out there that's a creator and, and have an idea, not sure what you why, why you're doing what you're doing, don't worry about it. Neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, there, I, we were, Jenny and I were talking earlier, and it's, like, it's kind of like the idea, why are you climbing the mountain? You go, I don't know. I'll tell you when I get to the top. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.